Hey developers, in this video we're going to look at the Phoenix framework and authentication. We're going to look at Phoenix first and then we're going to go back and look at Ember in view. But for first we're going to take a look at how we can add authentication to our app. Let's take a look. All right, so what we're going to do first to add authentication to our Phoenix app, if you remember correctly this is our blogging app and here it is here, is that we first need to add in Guardian and we're going to add in something called come on in. So Guardian is going to be the authentication framework that it works for Elixir. And we're going to add it directly to our Phoenix app. And then come on in will do help us with our hashing and be crypting our password. Of course, good password security means that we won't have a plain text password in our database. We're going to be only saving the hash of that password just to do make sure we have some sort of security. So um, if you look, go to the GitHub page for Guardian, it explains what you need to do. So first we need to do is in the dependencies, we're gonna go ahead and add it. So I'm going to add it here. And then it says in the config.exs file, we're gonna go ahead and add this in here. So, and then we're just gonna use the defaults for now. So if we go to config, I'll just put it right here, I suppose. And one thing you need to do, it, it does ask for a guardian secret key, which we'll need to generate. And I know in a previous video, I showed you how to put that in Heroku. So what we need to do here is we'll, we'll go ahead and generate the secret key and we'll add it for the secret environment here. We'll add it as a environment variable, I should say. So guardian secret here, if that doesn't exist, then we're gonna run the mix phoenix gen dot secret. And here it is. And we're gonna put that right here in quotes. Okay. All right, so we have our secret key, we have the configuration for guardian. And now we're gonna add the configuration for come on in. So it says right here that we need to go back to our dependencies. So we'll go back to mix and we'll just copy and paste what we need to add in here. And we need to add it to the applications too. So here's the applications. We'll just add it here. Well, we'll do this, oops. Come on in, comma. All right, so that should be, both of them are in there. I have the server running. So let's take a look to see if we can stop it here. So I'm gonna stop it and we're gonna see if we can compile everything. So we're gonna do depths.git and see if it looks like it found everything. Yeah, we don't need to do, yep, that'll compile it. We don't need to do anything else. And is there anything else we need to do here? I think that's it for those two. Okay, so now, Let's go ahead and create a user model. And this user model for a Phoenix app will be what we use to store the username and passwords. So let's create that. So we'll go mix phoenix generate model called user users email string and then password hash. So we're not storing the plain text password, of course. And that'll be string. And so it's creating everything for us. And we got a error. So let me check what this is. Okay, I think I found a problem. So we need to go mix depths dot compile and see what happens. It looks like something with come on in wasn't compiled. Let me say I missed, I missed that part. 
Okay, so it looks like it compiled now. Let's try to run this generate command again. Must have missed, just missed that step. Okay, it went ahead and created it. So before we run the ecto create, well, let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's run the ecto create and ecto migrate. That'll create our database. And okay, so it looks like everything worked fine, which is good. And we can run this command again with test. Um, just to make sure everything's okay. So it looks like did the same thing, but we had a problem. Let's take a look. Okay, it's complaining about rebar, but let's not worry about this problem yet. Because it did create the database for us. All right, so let's make sure we have all our dependencies still. Should still be fine. All right, so let's take a look at our models that we just created. So if we go to user.ex, we have this email string and a password hash, and we have timestamps, and then we have this change set, which this is how it kind of constructs the model. And what we want to do for this field is we're going to add two virtual fields for the password confirmation. And so what this is saying is that these aren't actual values that are going to be in the database. They're going to be virtual, but we can use them to help us actually um, find out what um, if everything worked correctly. So we actually the actual password and the confirmation. And it'll be used for validation. And we're going to change a few other things here. Okay, we're going to change this user's model a little bit more. So we added the two virtuals, the password and the password confirmation. And now we're going to add some required fields. And we do that by using this syntax. You can see here the at symbol. So this tells us that we want to make sure that you have to have email, password, and password confirmation, and everything for this model. And we're going to change the change set a little bit. And I have a cheat sheet here I'm looking at to make sure I have this right. So. We have a struct params, and that's empty. So let's let's do this. We can leave the struct here, and we want to validate these things. So what this says is that for this change set. that we're going to make sure that all these fields are required. That means if this model ever gets updated, it has to have these required fields. Uh, it has the email has to be in this format, it has to have an at symbol. The length of the password has to be at least eight characters. We are going to validate the confirmation with the password. We have, which we'll go into a little bit, we have a hashing password and the email has to be unique. Otherwise this change set will fail. And so, we're going to create a hash password. We're going to define it right now. And it kind of looks like this. So we have a hash password definition here. So if and if it's valid, uh, doesn't equal false from the change set. Do change set. Uh, however, though, if everything is valid, it goes through everything's true, then we use the bcrypt password pass the hash password. We're gonna hash it. And 
we're going to use the ecto change at put change, which go ahead and puts the password hash inside the chain set. So that is what those two things do. And I think that's all we need in here. We can call this model instead just to make more sense. Model. And we'll put model there. One sec. At this point, we can go ahead and start to see if this works, this change that we created. So if we go mix, test, and then test, slash models, slash user test dot exs and we haven't done tests earlier in the program uh, earlier in this series but we can go into that a little later we can say we have two tests one failure so you could see test change set with valid attributes got false expected something else and we have a few deprecations but I'm not going to worry about that right now you can see here though that's how it worked so let's go ahead and correct the test case. So if we go to user test, here I have it already up. We can see we're just sending this email content and a password hash. But we know if we look at our user model, we need to send our required fields, which is email, password, and password confirmation, which is the same password twice. So we're obviously not sending the right things over. The email needs to have an at sign in it. It has to be at least, the password has to be at least eight characters long. And well, it has to validate the confirmation that it's the same and it gets hashed. So let, let's take a look here. Let's go to user test. So let's change this. So our email needs to have an at sign in it. So let's put Eric at program with Eric.com. And our password, we have a password and we'll call it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we know we have a password confirmation, which needs to be the same thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so now since we are email, we have a password, we have a password confirmation, they all are correct now. And so now we're going to check the change set. Is it valid with valid adders and invalid adders. Invalid adders, of course, is just an empty set, so that would be invalid, but we could try something like email um, eric123 without that sign, um, password 1234567.8, password confirmation, and we'll put that in the next line. And we'll make that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two. So this should fail. Let's let's take a look. So I'm gonna go back up, mix test, let's run it. Oh great, great. See both of them pass. So it expected this change set to pass, and it did. And it expected this change pat this uh, invalid adders to fail, and it did. So that is exactly what we were looking for. Now, if we put it exactly the same, we add the at symbol back, and we run this test again. Now we can see it fails because this is actually is valid, even though, though it's invalid. So when it checks it, the refute right here, it comes up as valid, not invalid. So we can see that all our tests are working. And this is kind of cool, we can go back in and just change it like if this confirmation didn't match let's see what happens uh, let's do eight here but what about this first one what's if this didn't match let's see what happens okay so it failed so we can take a look here what failed it said number one failed test change of the valid attributes Expected truth, he got false. So obviously, since the password confirmation didn't match the password, it failed. So that's kind of a neat way to, to check our change set and make sure things are working correctly.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop it there. Uh, this is just a real quick introduction starter, but on the next video, we'll go into what we can do now since we have this change set created and we have this new model. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that Phoenix framework tutorial on authentication. We have a lot more to go, so stay tuned. If you like this video, please click that subscribe button. That really helps me. And thank you. Have a great day. Peace.